this is Wes Patterson from Sedona North Healing Arts and Red Cliff Kinesiology. I'm going to give you all a really quick um, health tip that you can do to help heighten and bring up your immune system. I actually learned this years ago. I was a lifeguard, I think about 16, working at the, the swimming pool in Tabor, the indoor pool. And there was an individual, Bob Hagel, and he was coming in. And at the time, Bob was in a wheelchair, overweight, had to use the lift to get down in and out of the pool. And then he'd start slowly doing some exercises in the water. And so what I would often see Bob doing is I'd see him just, you know, tapping here on the center of his chest. And so the one day I asked, what are you doing? He said, I'm stimulating my thymus. And I was like, oh, okay. He's like, yeah, anytime I feel I have a cough, a cold, anything like that, I just tap here and I just start doing that tap. So um, Bob would continue coming for the next two, three years. He got to the point where soon he'd be able to get in, wheelchair down and then climb down the ladder. Pretty soon he began able to walk in and out um, with some assists until finally he lost enough weight that he could just walk in and out. So um, his health was always improving. And so I, I took that on just anytime I would get a cold, I'd start doing that tap there to stimulate my thymus. If you're um, wondering what this is, um, you can even Google uh, Matthew McConaughey. You can watch the movie Wolf of Wall Street in that part where um, he's talking to Leo DiCaprio's character and they start doing this tap. And this is something that uh, Matthew McConaughey has done for years. Leonardo DiCaprio just saw him do it on set. They threw it into the movie and um, he does that just to get himself energized. Again, you can add an audible, uh, uh, you know, be goofy as, as much as you want. You might think, well, what's the point in that? Well, you know, you start getting a cold, cough these times, do it in the shower, you know, maybe do the Tarzan, get both hands going. Okay, that's your tip for the day. Stimulate your thymus. If you don't use it, it's just going to shrivel up and be you know good too. Take care. Hi everybody, my name is Jennifer Patterson from Sedona North Healing Arts. I'm a registered dietitian and today I'm here just to share some healthy eating tips, meal planning and budget saving when it comes to what we are dealing with all around the world right now and getting healthy food into our house on a budget. So let's just start with some key points of getting food into your home. So right now, um, we need to talk about meal planning. So meal planning can include sitting down with your family and talking about um, what foods that you want to enjoy as a family. You wanna make sure that you're planning three meals a day and getting everybody involved in this process. There's some great tools online. One example that I have is called the Weekly Meal Planner. And that one is um, on the Alberta Health Services Healthy Eating Starts Here website. But there's a variety of different meal planners that you can find on Pinterest, Dietitians of Canada. And um, these tools just help you kind of get a good idea of what you're, what you're gonna be uh, buying when you go to the grocery store. Finally, having a, a healthy grocery list. So again, this is an example of something that I pulled off, off of the Healthy Eating Starts Here from Alberta Health Services. But you can also just keep a running grocery list on your phone, um, on your fridge, and as you see things going, uh, getting low, you can add that to your grocery list. So having one person designated as your grocery shopper is not a bad idea at this time because we want to limit the exposure um, out in the public and we want to make sure that we're not um, having our kids running around the grocery store and bringing large groups of people around. So what we want to do is um, kind of have one person that goes out and does the shopping and uh, making sure that we're again following those good hand washing te uh, techniques when we're um, coming in back into the home. So pulling out some good, uh, some of your old tried and true recipe books. So these are just a couple of my favorites. Dietitians of, Ca of Canada has some great recipe books out there. Um, but we've kind of gotten away from looking at uh, recipe books, but it's kind of fun just to pull them out and kind of go back and look at some of your old favorite recipes and maybe try new recipes. If you're looking at budget-friendly meals, then you can just Google that. Um, Pinterest also has some great budget-friendly meals out there that uses some plant-based proteins. 
um, and some whole grains that is a really nice way to add some variety to your diet, but also looking at uh, reducing your food costs. Um, right now, if we can look at online grocery shopping, that is also a good option for people. But you need to make sure you plan ahead because some of the grocery stores right now are looking at five to seven days before you could actually do a grocery pickup. So if at all possible, uh, make sure you're planning for that. The stores are often needing the, um, the delivery service for the more vulnerable population, um, like those with a compromised immune system as well as our senior population. Finally, you wanna make sure that you're reducing your food waste in your home. So we have a system called FIFO, which is first in, first out. So as you're buying new groceries, you wanna make sure that you're pulling the groceries that you've bought first to the front and then putting the new groceries to the back, whether that's the fridge or the pantry, so that you're always using the things you bought first, first. Um, and that really will reduce on the amount of spoilage you have and reducing the food waste in your home. When veggies and fruits are starting to get low in your home, the fresh veggies and fruits, you can peel them and cut them up, put them into baggies or into containers and throw them into your freezer so that you can use them for soups, for stews, or for smoothies. The other good option is when fresh is running low is buying frozen. So when you're looking at buying frozen uh, fruit, um, really anything works and it works good for on top of hot oatmeal <coughs> or in cold cereal or making smoothies. Um, you can also buy the frozen veggies and they're just as healthy as the fresh and they can be used for soup, stews, or as a great side dish. Uh, we pretty much throw them in anything, um, quesadillas, tacos, anything like that. Um, finally, your canned um, veggies and fruits. So when you're buying canned fruit, you wanna make sure that it says no sugar added um, or packed in water versus the ones that are packed in syrup to reduce the added sugars. And then finally with your uh, canned veggies, you want to make sure that you're buying the ones that say the no salt added. So when you're thinking about putting together a meal, well, thinking about the healthy plate model. So this is an example of the healthy plate model. So having vegetables on the top and then a quarter of the plate, the whole grains, and a quarter of the plate, the protein foods. So Canada's Food Guide is emphasizing that we um, look at some different options for plant-based protein. So if you haven't seen the new Canada's Food Guide, this is a copy of that. So um, looking at a quarter of your plate being the protein foods. So plant-based proteins can be anything from your nut butter, so almond butter, peanut butter, can be beans, lentils, and again, those can be canned as long as you drain them and you rinse them to get the added salt off. They can be dry. Um, you can look at um, tofu as an option, and also our milk products have been added to the protein food section. So yogurt, kefir, milk, those all count as our protein foods. And then of course eggs are a great option. Um, so again, making sure that um, you're eating the eggs first in the fridge, because those are ones that we want to practice that first in, first out um, system. So when you're looking at uh, planning your meals, keeping the Canada's Food Guide and that Eat Well plate in mind. Finally, um, when you're buying um, your veggies and fruits or your meat products, you want to do a little bit of math in the store. So you want to look at what is the better buy per kilogram of that food. So a lot of times when you're buying in larger quantities um, or what they call in bulk purchases, usually you get a better bang for your buck. But that's not always the case. So again, just doing a little bit of math in the store will help determine uh, what's a better buy for you. Really try to get away right now from buying in the bulk food section um, because, um, again, risking of contamination and, um, you know, the pe different people handling the handles and scooping into the bins. A lot of the stores actually have that blocked off at this time. So buying in packages is the best way to go um, when you're looking at things like that you normally would buy in the bulk section. And then finally sharing. So this is a time that we're supposed to be social, socially isolating and yes, but I like to call it actually physical distancing and actually getting more connected socially. So it might be a um, time where you're sharing your favorite recipes with friends and family, and uh, that's a great way to connect with people, but also share healthy meal ideas. So 
would hope today I gave you a few different tips and shed some light on eating well on a budget. 